like a little baby crab moving to its new home. We're going to call this a long-term follow-up on my big boy Nook. This is the remnants, the shell of my Nook 9 Extreme. This is a, a computer I've been running for a while as mostly a behind the TV gaming PC. And it's been having a few problems recently, but I wanted to see if the compute guts were still okay. If you've been following my channel, you've seen probably a few little small form factor PC builds and I have a fondness. I have a soft spot in my heart for the Nook style, all in one laptop guts PC. The Nook 9 Extreme followed that same philosophy. Using really high-end laptop guts, you can squish everything down into a smaller form factor. And flipping this down here, you can see there's only a couple of PCI slots because the entire computer was basically a PCI card. Everything goes into this one motherboard card. And the original idea behind this Nook Extreme was that Intel would eventually sell other upgrade cards that could just slot right in. You need an upgrade for your system, you pop this out, pop it in, and it should be easier and faster than doing a whole motherboard swap. It was a great philosophy, but it didn't really pan out the way that Intel sold this box. I was actually kind of excited to see would I eventually be able to upgrade this. This was a top of the line 9th gen Core i9, so I didn't really have anywhere to go with this generation of upgrade cards. New upgrade cards never really materialized for this form factor. The newest Nook Extreme kit is essentially just a small form factor PC with a full desktop sized socket CPU. I've adored this form factor where it's coming in just roughly the size of like a game console. It's smaller than our PS4. And having something like this behind our TV has been kind of overkill for a lot of the games that we like to play. We've found very little need to try and upgrade to newer consoles. We still don't have a PS5. Plus, along the way, some of our entertainment dollars have gone more mobile, where instead of trying to get a new Xbox or a new PlayStation, our family opted for a Steam Deck. And with the Steam Deck, something really interesting has happened where my wife is a very social gamer. She likes to play games with me, but she's been doing things like picking up the controller on this Nook or picking up the Steam Deck on her own just to get a little casual time in for herself. You can imagine some of our family frustrations using this box in the middle of a really good run on Vampire Survivors and then it would just click off. No warning, no blue screen, just instant shut off. Pretty confident it wasn't like a Windows problem because there would be enough power and compute processing going on to at least give us an error code. I was really worried that there was something else fundamentally wrong with the guts of our nice little gaming PC. And there's not a ton of information or troubleshooting for this variation on the Nook experiment. This wasn't a super popular chassis. I think a lot of the Nooks that you see that actually make it out in the wild are the less expensive ones, the more sort of self-contained all-in-one units. But going down our Reddit rabbit hole, I found a few other people that were describing some similar symptoms and it sounded like the common element for all of their issues was a power supply that would burn itself out. When I originally put this Nook together, and I think it's even a part of the video that I made on this channel, I was very impressed at how they were able to sort of cram all of these bits into such a small case. My biggest complaints at the time, and, and I'm, they're still frustrations that I have today, in using tiny little fans in this kind of top piece that slid on to help with airflow, Intel used some ridiculously tiny screws to try and seat all of these pieces together. Even the Nook card itself is using these tiny little pin screws to slot in an oversized PCI card. In doing a bunch of building and teardowns, new GPU, putting in more RAM, I actually stripped one of the screws so the fans would slot in. They wouldn't kind of line up flush with the rest of the case. It was a big bummer. And I didn't want to do a ton of troubleshooting because if the problem is immediate power shutoff, that's a little dangerous to the compute bits that are going on in the rest of the box. I didn't want to fry something in here. When I started building this box, I was still at Newegg and one of the parts that we used, one of the parts that we borrowed in kind of showcasing this new generation of Nook for the time was an older mini graphics card. And with all of the components in and out and changing pieces and parts, we managed to fry that GPU. I eventually landed on a 1660 Super, which went in here, which has been stellar for 1080p, 60 frames per second gaming on most decently graphics intense AAA titles. One of the things that I never quite grokked putting the Nook together in the first place, and, and for how kind of messy, you know, sort of the cable, some of the cable management is kind of up on the sidewall, there's not a lot of airflow going in some of these directions. There's a big old heat sink right above the power supply and in between the two card slots. Now it sort of makes sense to me seeing how this box has aged. One of the potential design flaws of this Core i9 system. I'm kind of slow, but I get there. When the Nook card is seated in this slot, and it's all by itself, you've got plenty of airflow. The card itself has an intake fan and it kind of vents up 
through these tiny little fans that run on the top of the case. But if you put a GPU right next to it, there's very little clearance. And the GPU is, you know, it's got a fan on it and it's trying to vent air in a couple different directions, but how air would make it through the compute unit versus how air would make it through the GPU. And there's almost no clearance between those two cards, which would make sense that you would have something in between to try and get some additional heat out of the system. The power supply runs like the full length of the system with a teeny little fan venting out the back. And you've got two cards sitting on top of it with airflow just kind of hovering in this space, kind of coming up out the top of the case, but nothing really helping air get in and through where the power supply is just soaking. I'm really trying to look and there's some like vents over here and I can see a little bit of copper, but man, that's not a lot, especially when all the cables are kind of pushed down into the front of the case, really blocking where air would go through to try and cool your power supply. And we probably should have seen the warning signs a little bit earlier. For a while now, you'd go and you'd push the power button, you'd walk away, wait for the system to kind of boot up and then you'd come back and you're like, hey, the Nook isn't on, it's not running. I must not have clicked the button enough. It was very fast. I, I got one power shut off. I rebooted the system, got back into a game. And again, we're talking like Vampire Survivors kinds of games that we like to play here for the whole family. Even my daughter's playing games like Vampire Survivors. And, and I made it through a run. I was like, okay, that's pretty good. And I played a little uh, tower defense game that I like. It's got some, some decently complex graphics and lots of unit management, but it's not too heavy a load. Seemed to play just fine. Literally the next day. Couldn't go more than like, five minutes into gameplay before the entire system would just click off. We did that twice, and then we left the box alone, and I went digging through internet forums and Reddit posts. One of the issues with a Nook as an experiment is that there's not a lot of broad compatibility with different parts. Going through this chassis, it looks like an absolute nightmare trying to replace this power supply. Getting the Nook card out is really easy. That's actually one of the, the cool things about these old Nooks was that the entire motherboard was essentially on a card. But trying to get through all of these pieces and get this power supply out and then find a compatible power supply to go back in there, another small form factor power supply, didn't really sound like a lot of fun with the minimal clearance. In this case, had already had some issues, like I said, with stripping a screw, and I wanted something with just a bit more airflow. There was no other legit solution for, for that kind of transfer. I am so happy the folks at Cooler Master were looking at this design thinking like, hey, this could have some upgrade potential. Intel's talking about doing these card slots. What if we built a case that people could easily migrate all of their Nook 9 bits over to? Over time, if they wanted to, they'd be able to pop in other components. And it comes at the expense of some of that Nook 9 petiteness. Folks at Cooler Master to the rescue, this box has been pretty much discontinued, but you can still find them out in the wild. I got this one off eBay. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. I've worked with Cooler Master in the past, but this is just they had the best solution for my problems here, and I'm so glad they had an option that could get us uh, back up and running. Using the upgraded Nook case, we can see uh, it's quite a bit longer. <laughs> It'll still fit behind our TV, but it's going to take up a lot more space. Thankfully, it's not a ton deeper, but it's giving us a lot more room for air. First and foremost, one of the best upgrades is that we just go to proper big boy screws so that we can easily pop components off like these uh, these sidewalls. I'm gonna kind of move this Nook 9 case here to the floor. It's a Cooler Master case. So upgrades, things like just larger top exhaust fans are gonna be greatly appreciated. But one of the reasons why this gets so much longer is because we're using a more traditional small form factor power supply mounted in a way that it should help draw air through the power supply more effectively. Please pardon all of my messy cabling here. I'm actually not quite done arranging all of the components inside the chassis. I've got to get some better Wi-Fi antennas. The Wi-Fi performance on the Nook 9 case wasn't terrific. And you would see these little uh, these little cable connectors. I, what, what are these called? They're like the IPX uh, cable connectors. And they just terminate into soldered pads on the front of the uh, the Nook 9 case. No big surprise, we weren't getting great Wi-Fi throughput with that kind of a solution. So I've got more traditional um, antennas that are just gonna pop out the back of this case. And that should hopefully improve our signal and our reception behind a TV. All of that is gonna get cleaned up once I can run the little cables to get our antennas set up. Right up front, there's my 1660 Super. And this has been just kind of the happy little surprise of putting this 
this system together. When I originally built the Nook 9, I really wanted the 2060 Super and the prices had gone up a little bit and it was right before the real peak shutdown during the pandemic. And I was kind of making these offhand comments like, oh, I just got to slum it with this 1660. And it was very quickly into that that I'm glad a couple of other nerds sort of told me to get over myself because GPUs were getting harder and harder to come by and prices were starting to climb really, really quickly. This 1660 Super has been doing us just fine. This system, Intel 9th Gen with a 1660 Super, has been fantastic for, like I was saying, not the most graphics intense <laughs> AAA gaming, but for a lot of the games that we like to play. Like we don't, this, this box is such extreme, extreme overkill for a lot of the couch co-op games that we enjoy. Things like Tetris or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or watching my daughter play through a run on Vampire Survivors. One of the things that I'm a little concerned with how this box will age, it's not significantly deeper. Like it's a little bit thicker, but it's not significantly deeper than the uh, Intel case was. So the clearance between the GPU and the Nook card, it's still pretty tight. Cooler Master has done something very interesting. There's a plastic shell that goes over the fan of the Nook card card, which gives you sort of a cold air intake pulling air from under the system to go through the Nook element, leaving the GPU by itself. It's not like the Nook is going to try and draw air off of the back, the hot backside of the GPU. That is such a good idea, but it's stuck on there with a 3M adhesive. So if I want to get in there and I pull out the GPU and I want to do an upgrade, say I want to add more RAM or I want to uh, add a new SSD, I have to get inside that Nook card to do it, which means I've got to remove that shell and I've got to find new new 3M adhesive pads to get it sort of stuck back on there. This whole process, this whole experiment, there really was a great idea Intel was playing with. Can we just put an entire laptop computer on one card that you could easily pop in and out? I feel Intel really just didn't do a very good job of supplying the market with more of those upgrade cards or the idea of this being like a really good machine for IT departments. Hey, if you need to upgrade your client's computer, you just pop in this new card. It was a message that I really felt needed more handholding and more explaining for general consumers. If you're interested in a small form factor build, I absolutely adore the Nook because it's kind of like you know, baby's first PC build. They're so easy and fast to put together and to upgrade. And the Nook Extreme was a really interesting take on that idea. It's really started changing my perception on how much raw horsepower, torque, compute, performance, no replacement for displacement that I actually need. We're into next, next gen consoles and they're, they're definitely better for 4K gaming and 4K 60 frame per second gaming. And I've kind of been okay just slumming it with 1080p even on our nice 4K TV. I have certainly run into games that start chugging on these internals, but at the same time, we've got reasonably good data in our household. I'm going to be getting some new Wi-Fi antennas to improve that performance a little bit more. And some of these newer games that are coming out that really make this box struggle have been an absolute breeze on game streaming services. Which is funny, we're a PlayStation household, but I still pay for Game Pass, and I've really enjoyed using xCloud, being able to stream games on our decent Wi-Fi. There's been even less incentive for me to shop a new GPU or to replace this box, build a really powerful small form factor gaming PC with much more modern guts. I'm actually really happy keeping this system running even a bit longer. Intel's already backed away from this specific flavor. They're making more traditional small form factor PCs. Nooks are never gonna be cheap, but they are an interesting project computer, even for these new big boy Nook Extreme systems. But I feel those being more traditional small form factor desktop PCs have lost some of the charm and some of the daring experiment that we saw when we were trying to make more compact laptop style high-end desktops. It is absolutely the area where we're gonna see gaming and enthusiast PCs face their toughest challenges as more and more companies are examining other solutions for compute power, like ARM chipsets, looking at what Apple is doing with the M series, looking at what Qualcomm is gonna be delivering with new performance cores. This little box has so much life left in it. This is such a labor of love to try and find the upgrade solution. I was really worried I'd have to get another Nook case. I am so grateful that Cooler Master made this product, even though it's kind of technically discontinued, and that there were enough of them floating out there uh, still out in the wild that I could I could grab this. My daughter requested some Shredder's Revenge later tonight, and now I'm much more confident that we'll be able to make it through a couple missions without the power supply 
clicking us off. I just had to share just a fun trip down memory lane. So folks, I don't really have anything to link to. You know, like there's no Amazon affiliate link for these kinds of systems. I mean, if you're shopping a small form factor PC, you probably want to buy a little bit newer than what these guts were. But I just think it's always fun when there's still some good compute life left in something and we can keep that product running a little bit longer. So I hope you've enjoyed this little trek back through my history of PC building. It was fun for me. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been fantastic. If you're clicking on affiliate links in the descriptions of my videos, if you're hitting the home site, somegadgetguide.com, if you're buying a little merch, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguide. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the multiverse. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams. And I'm playing with a few other things like the Mastodons and the Flickers. And I will catch you all on the next video.